So it's with great pleasure today that I canceled Jon Stewart. Now, Jon Stewart actually has a show which streams on Apple TV and which generates enthusiasm and public interest about on the level with a WNBA game. If you're like the average person, you probably didn't even know that the show existed. The last you heard from Stewart was probably several months ago when he went viral for criticizing some aspects of the mainstream COVID narrative. I think it was last year. And he earned many high fives and backslaps from the right for this moment of lucidity. Oh, that John Stewart, conservatives said, he, he's, not, he's not woke like other liberals. He's one of the good ones, you know. This is a familiar process. Someone on the left says something mildly sane and then is immediately valorized by the right as a champion of truth and common sense. He's baptized, usually against his will, as an honorary conservative, even as 99.9% .9 of his worldview still remains firmly planted on the left end of the political spectrum. The next step in the process is inevitable. The newly christened conservative hero proceeds shortly after this fleeting episode of rationality to go back to far left talking points. And then he is once again demonized by the same conservatives who two seconds before were ready to canonize him. Around and around we go, nothing ever changes. On that note, here is Jon Stewart on his Apple TV show talking to his viewers about, or rather to his viewer, about the problem with white people. Listen. For however sincerely we want to reckon and listen, the truth is America has always prioritized white comfort over black survival. Black people have had to fight so hard for equality that they've been irreparably set back in the pursuit of equity. And any real attempt to uh, rep rep repair a ton of that damage, <laughs> reparation, <laughs> sets off white people's they're coming for our <laughs> alarm, which we would know ourselves had we actually been listening. My feeling is white people have a very, very serious problem and they should start thinking about what they can do about it take me out of it understood so what you can't see in that video because it's just out of frame is ibram x kendi standing there with a gun pointed right at john stewart <clears throat> at least i assume that's what's happening because the whole thing has the look sound and feel of one of those taliban hostage videos only it's worse than that because the taliban to my knowledge doesn't usually castrate the hostage before filming the video Stewart, on the other hand, sits there like a docile gelding, head bowed, meekly whispering, understood, after a black woman declares that everything is the fault of white people. Later in the episode, Stewart uh, brought on a panel of fellow self-hating whites to talk about uh, some more about how awful white people are. There was one man involved in the conversation, Andrew Sullivan, who had the gumption to suggest that perhaps white people are not necessarily spawns of Satan and that maybe, in fact, there might even be some good things about America and American history and white people. These outrageous claims were dutifully shouted down by Stewart and the other panelists. Listen to that. You're not living on the same <laughs> planet we are. Honestly. No, I really don't think you I are. Think you are not living, I think you are not living in the planet most Americans are, which is why this kind of extremism, this, right. this anti-white extremism, yes. is losing popular support is, is creating a backlash, is going to elect Republicans and yeah. undo a lot of the good you think you're doing. This is what Second happens when you don't you talk about it. Right. This, this is what happens when white nothing. people don't talk about it, is you have racist dog whistle tropes like this yeah. that actually perpetuate and perpetuate and perpetuate. So I am, I, I, and I did not come on this, on this show to sit here and argue with another white man. That's one of the reasons that we don't even engage with white men at Race to Dinner. Um, <laughs> So, um, you know, because quite honestly, if white men were going to do something about racism, you had 400 years. You could have done it. Oh, she's not going to engage with white men. She went on a white man's show to sit on a panel with white men, but she doesn't want to talk to white men. She hates white men. She despises them. Doesn't even think that they should be able to speak. And she feels comfortable vocalizing all of this bigotry because she expects that she'll be applauded for it. And she was. But remember... All of our systems are racist against black people, even though the only group of people you can actually be openly racist against are white people, especially white men. Makes total sense. If you're brain damaged or have single digit IQ, which is precisely the demographic that critical race theory appeals to the most. Now, the angry portly woman there with the bad haircut says that white men should have already done something about racism. We had 400 years, she says. 
To which you might point out that it was largely white men who abolished slavery. Um, white men didn't invent slavery, but they did abolish it. White men, in fact, are responsible for many of the best things about our civilization. That's just a fact. White men have been busy, you know, inventing modern science and building skyscrapers and fighting and dying in our wars and defeating the Nazis, creating modern medicine, inventing cars, electricity, space travel, antibiotics, writing the greatest novels and plays and poems in history. That's what white men have been up to. But they're not worthy of even speaking to the bitter cat lady on the John Stewart panel. She turns up her nose at the whole group. Be gone, she says. Well, okay, maybe we'll go, but you better hope we don't take all our stuff with us on the way out the door because you're not going to be left with much if we do. But hold on a second. She said that uh, white men had 400 years to do something about racism. Why 400 years specifically? I mean, what about, and what about everybody else on earth? What was everyone else doing about racism? Who exactly was fighting against racism 400 years ago? Well, she says 400 years ago because she's a mindless disciple of the 1619 Project, and she believes that racism was invented around that time, and that it was white people who invented it, and only white people who ever engaged in it. In reality, of course, racism has existed in the human species everywhere on earth, in every population everywhere, since the dawn of civilization. Racism is just one form of tribalism. It's a form of tribalism that still exists in the world today, in fact, and can be found in much more virulent and violent forms in the parts of the world where white people are least present. It's not just that there is racial and ethnic tribalism in Africa and Asia, too. It's that there's a whole hell of a lot more of it in those regions of the world, and it comes in a far more brutal package. Now, going back in history, I asked earlier, who exactly was fighting against racism 400 years ago? I'm not claiming that white men were, but, and they weren't, but, but who was? Well, the answer is nobody. Not a soul on earth back in those days. The idea that all people should be treated equally regardless of how they look or where they're from is an idea that simply did not exist anywhere in the world 400 years ago. That idea had to be thought of and codified into law. And guess who thought of it? That's right, white men. Now, granted, the white men who came up with the concept did not actually apply it consistently because when it came down to it, they shared the flaws that were ubiquitous in almost all human beings on earth at that time. But they certainly set the stage for racial equality under the law. They put the framework in place. I'd say that's a pretty significant achievement, even if it doesn't impress the panelist on Jon Stewart's show or Jon Stewart himself. But who really cares? Because anyway, Jon Stewart is today canceled. Listen. Hit that subscribe button right now. Do it right now. I thank you for your compliance. It is somewhat appreciated.